What's up guys, this is Santec IT Solutions here. In today's video I'm going to be cover covering RIP version 2 routing protocol. Um, you can see my typology here, so just uh, make a quick memorization of some of the things there. If you need to take a screenshot that could be helpful too. But I'm going to jump right into the Seattle router and um, let's get started with configuring our RIP routing protocol. So I'll start with showing you the interfaces. Everything's already configured on our interfaces here. Um, I just have to put in the routing protocol information. So you see I have the 172 LAN network and the 192 uh, WAN link, serial link that I'm using. And I just want to show you the routing table before we add anything. All you're going to see is um, should be just the two connected routes and uh, there they are. So now I'm going to start with our RIP configuration. You go into global configuration, put in router RIP, and type in version 2 because it's the version we're using. And I also put in the no auto summary command. By default, RIP auto summarizes routes. So I'm going to turn that off and so we get a better look. And then we're going to enter our network information. So we're going to put network for the 172 and <clears throat> use the command uh, network again for the 192 and you'll see here I put dot 10 for that 172 I highlighted that for a second I want to show you why I did that because um, when I do the show IP protocols our network information is going to look different and that's because RIP is actually a, a classful um, routing protocol um, it's going to it doesn't send the subnet mask along with the broadcast so it's literally going to just broadcast but first I want to show you the the um, update timer and the hold down timer these are the default where you can check what version rip you're using you see there sent and the auto network summarization is not in effect so th those are important things to look for when you're um, answering questions doing labs and taking your CCNA so you see again the 172.16.0.0 even though I put .10 it automatically defaulted it to the classful net uh, the classful network which is a, a class B network 172.16 so um, now I'm going to jump over in the Chicago router and I'm going to do the same thing I did before it just um, our configurations will be very similar but we have to add another one for our um, our secondary WAN link there the 192.168.20 network has to be represented so we're going to we're going to have three network entries on this router um, and you see we have our three connected networks so there's nothing on this router yet as far as any routing table information beyond what it's connected to and again it's router rip version 2 I'm abbreviating here no auto you don't have to type the whole thing and we'll put the network info so you may notice that the 192.168.10 um, and you're going to also see the dot .20, it's going to save those because those are class C networks. Again, RIP is a classful by default. Even by putting on the no auto, summer, the no auto summary command, it still is programmed in a classful mode. So it's not truly always a uh, classless in a way. Um, so you see there's our networks are configured. And I'm going to just save this uh, configuration real quick. And we'll hop over to the New York router. I'm going to get that all set up. And I just want to show you the interfaces again that we have here. We just have two. And for those of you that might not know, well, why do you need a routing protocol or static router or anything like that? Well, if you're if you have discontinuous networks or networks that are you know not connected they're basically in different subnets or they you know like a, a 10 network and a 192 these are different numbers they won't be able to communicate to each other without some kind of routing protocol or static route so, so this way that the packets know where to go and that was really fast just showing you again you know the same thing router rip version 2 so now we can start testing our configuration and see if it's working I just want to show you the routing table now after we've added all of our RIP configuration to each router we should have an entry for each one of these uh, subnets 
so you see the labeled R for rip and it gives you the information and this is important to be able to read the routing table for, for these kind of questions and we now have our, our different uh, routing entries we should be able to ping so I'm going to try pinging out to one of the other networks I'm going to ping to the Seattle network and there you have it uh, we were able to ping successfully and I pinged the host inside the, that network as well just a couple packets got dropped but that was our first attempt which again is normal um, you only have to be concerned when you don't have any any packet success on second try everything went through so that's pretty good I'm going to try pinging um, Chicago maybe I'll just jump over to another router see if we can ping you see we have our routes here in the Seattle router as well so everything propagated throughout the network properly which is good and RIP is a very simple protocol um, it, it's not recommended for large scale it's not very scalable basically um, it, it uses broadcast to advertise routing updates and it sends them out periodically um, if anything changes it just even more when it doesn't it just keeps updating and that can cause some serious congestion on the network so there are better options and I'm going to be covering um, some of those options in other videos um, those options would be OSPF and uh, EIGRP which both of which you need to know for your CCNA and uh, it looks like everything's still working here I'm able to ping from the host out and uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching my video